The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Ontario Agricultural Conference coverage on realagriculture.com. Hey, I've just caught up with the two of the gentlemen who've been talking about sizzling soybeans this morning, and that's Horace Bonner, O'Mafra's uh, soybean specialist, and Mike Staten, who's uh, from Michigan State and one of the lead- leading educators on soybeans in the state. And um, a lot of questions today about how do we get those higher yields, how do we better manage this crop, and I've selected three questions... Okay. from your presentation today. And I wanted to tackle those. And I guess the first one, Mike, I will start with you. And that is, you know, you know, the talk that later maturing soybeans um, are required for higher yields. How do you tackle that? Yeah, I, first of all, I would say for the highest yields. Um, I, I don't think so necessarily. I think there's some qualifiers. Uh, we looked at some data, long-term data in Michigan, and what we showed is that uh, if you're planting in that mid-May kind of time frame and you're planting adapted varieties for the area um, and you're choosing the very best yielding varieties there in, in each maturity group, there really isn't a big difference. Now you plant early, the full season beans are gonna really shine. You start planting in late planting conditions, you know, after the 10th of June, somewhere in there, yeah, yeah. then maybe the uh, earlier varieties, you yeah. need to switch. Yeah, so so I, your data is around a couple of bushels, right? Pretty much? It, it, it is, it is. There's not much of a spread if you're choosing those highest yielding varieties and, uh, mm. and you're planting in that window. And adaptive is the key word. Horace, you've done a lot of work on this in Ontario. Um, a, a similar story? Well, I think it is, but it depends a little bit about the geography. Mike brought up planting date. Geography has something to do with it, for sure. And, and generally speaking, I think it is important that we recognize there is a trend that if you just look at all the varieties we grow in Ontario here, and you know we plot them, you can look at that at gosoy.ca, and the, the longer the maturing variety that it is, the yield goes up a little bit, right? And to Mike's point, it's probably not as big a number if you're in a, a reasonable range, you know, within a, let's say, a one, one maturity group. It's not as big as maybe some growers have, have thought it was. And, and part of the reason we kind of um, think it's worth talking about is I've had growers come to me and say, listen, uh, we, we're, I'm in a, in a two, two zone, but I look at some of this stuff in, uh, from the, the yield contest winners, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they're growing pretty long stuff. And I know I can get away with it. I know that these beans will finish. Let's just plant a three or yeah. even a three point. I've had people say, well, let's bring in a four because mm-hmm. it goes all the way to 10, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, and they'll finish some of these things, right? But the point is, it doesn't actually work that way. The yield doesn't just keep going up. Right. right. And I want to talk now about planting. Um, we've seen a lot more in recent years planting soybeans for before corn, getting into that ultra ordering, uh, ultra early soybeans. Um, some work, Mike, you've done in Michigan. I, I think I wrote down 2.3 bushel advantage last week of April versus that mid-May. Is that the story? It uh, And actually, it includes some really ultra-early planting, too, that data set does. Uh, maybe even as early as late March and first of uh, first week of April. Um, we did have one site, though. I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, where we lost six and a half mm-hmm. bushels. Um, but out of 20-some locations, uh, no, the story was positive, very, very positive. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's probably... One of the things I think maybe Horst and I agree with, agronomically, planting date is one of the biggest things that we can do to manage our, our yield potential. Yeah, and I think you've done some work too, and I wrote down 1.3 bushel advantage. Well, you. we have a nice trial, um, a number of trials underway now, and we're two years into this project. And the question really is, you know, when you compare soybeans to corn, do they respond differently, right? Mm-hmm. And so for years and years, we have been hitting on this fact that pretty uh, there's a pretty nice yield response in corn to planting relatively early. And then we kind of said, well, that's true for soybeans. Mm-hmm. And now we've gone to the place where we say, wow, soybeans should even be planted before corn. Right. It's kind of a funny progression yeah, if you think is. about it. 
the point of the story is, so far from our trials, both crops respond similarly. Right. Very, very kind of, uh, same kind of story. Mm -hmm. There, April is good, right, if conditions are good for both crops, and the yield is essentially the same as that first part of May, even middle of May, a little bit less, but so far the data is pretty clear that both corn and soybeans do well planted early. So to answer the question, should you plant soybeans before corn? I think it depends on whether or not um, you're worried about plant stands and other factors, yes. right? But from a yield perspective, yeah, it, it's working pretty well for us, right? right. So far, yeah. until we have that big frost, Mike. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, so you can keep that to the south. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I want to wrap this conversation up talking about fertility. And you talked today about fringe fertility can matching, you know, good fertility. Um, can you sort of do both and how do, how do they shake out? Can you define fringe versus good fertility for me? No, actually I can't. Uh, <laughs> uh, what we were trying to get at there is this concept of additional fertility mm -hmm. such as foliar feeding, maybe a two by two band in, in terms of through the planter, right? Extra mm -hmm. stuff, because mm -hmm. we've, we've learned over the years that good soil fertility mm -hmm. is where it's at for soybeans, yeah. right? Because the mm -hmm. roots are relatively wimpy, so you want a good soil to be able to uptake those nutrients if you get the rain. So that's what we were trying to get yeah. at. And, and the long and the short of it is, you know, in, in the Ontario trials that we have so far, and we have quite a few of them now, the foliar feeding stuff and the extra fertilizer seems to not work very consistently, right? right? There are some mm -hmm. exceptions, mm -hmm. and, and, and Mike, I think you would agree on, on the manganese, right, for yes, instance. Definitely. But uh, that's what we were getting at in terms of good soil fertility. We know that's the basis. And then can we add to it? And we're still struggling to add to it with fringe fertility. Yeah. Add to yield is what I mean. Exactly. Right? And Mike, uh, two by two band you talked about. Um, yes. You know, you're a bit of, you're a fan of that. Versus in furrow. Exactly. I am. That, that would be, the, I want to qualify that. I, I really think both of those, though, are going to have marginal benefits if we've got good soil fertility, like mm -hmm. Horace was saying. Yeah. If we paid attention to our P and K levels, our soil pH, uh, watching for manganese deficiency, inoculating our beans, I, I think foliar fertilization mm -hmm. and, and starter fertilizer are going to have marginal benefits. Yeah. Yeah. I want to wrap this up with, some, with a slide that you talked about, and uh, that was, you know, what is good soil fertility management? Give mm -hmm. me some of those tips. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, just soil testing. Um, once every three years would be a good one, and then believe the soil test. Base your, your actual management decisions on those soil test mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for lime, for P and K, I think is essential. In Michigan, we have what's called the critical level, critical soil test mm -hmm. level for P and K. And basically what that level is that you're going to attain 95 to 97% of your yield goal without any, any additional fertilizer at all. So make sure you're there. Um, in Michigan, for P, it's, it's 20 parts per million. For K, it's uh, 100, 120 parts per million. Right. Yep. right. Hey, some great insights for uh, anybody who uh, wasn't here today. Uh, the video of your presentation is going to be available at the, on the Ontario Agricultural Good. Conference Good. website. We've only scratched the surface here. I want to thank both of you guys for yeah, stopping really. by and uh, enjoy the conference. Yeah, thank it's you. been fun again. Uh -huh. Yeah, awesome. thanks, Bernard. It yeah, has. Yeah, very good.